Travis Wayne Goodsell. In the parable of the ten virgins, there are five foolish virgins who, when it's time for the wedding feast, wedding ceremony and the feast happen right after the other, <clears throat> they are unprepared. They don't have enough reserve oil. I don't even think they had any. They just had what was in their lamps. And, uh, and so they had to rush to the store at the last minute to try to get oil reserves and thus were late and were not allowed in because you can't have the ceremony interrupted with latecomers. You need to be in your seats 15 minutes before the event. <laughs> you don't want to ruin the the bride's wedding. She'll not like you for being the one who takes the attention away from her. <laughs> but what is not understood as the church comments in manuals and so they don't understand the cultural significance is that these women weren't just unprepared they didn't even think they needed to be prepared they thought they had plenty of time <clears throat> before it comes they thought that they would have a signal that would alert them hey it's about time make sure you have your reserve and then they would go get their reserve well, it didn't come and so when the signal came they went and then came back and realized hey what's going on they weren't prepared because they were looking beyond the mark that comes from Jacob chapter 4 in verse 14 where it's talking about the Israelites being a stiff-necked people and if you don't know Jews in this context are Israelites <clears throat> and so we as Mormons are new Israelites as our patriarchal blessings puts us into a tribe mostly in Ephraim unless you're a foreigner <laughs> and Russia, they're special. They have every tribe, according to Sister Nelson, when she talked uh, with her husband back in uh, June of 2018, when uh, they talked to the youth. And Nelson established the youth battalion as his symbol, Mars, was at the mouth of the goat beast. If you're unfamiliar with the goat beast and what he represents, I refer you to the inverted pentagram. It is often overlapped, overlaid on the inverted pentagram by those who worship Lucifer. <coughs> and they were a stiff-necked people. That means they held their head up high and oh yeah I'm better than all of you we thank the oh God that we are better than our brethren it was Ormites on their church pulpits during fast and testimony meetings same rote testimony you don't want to cause trouble you might have a, a disgruntled woman who was raped as a missionary in the MTC appear at <laughs> the rapist's <laughs> ward bearing testimony that he's a rapist. Can't have that in the church. <laughs> uh, and then they tried to assassinate her. God. And so, you know, a friend uh, introduced me to this movie, The Crossing. It's the Delaware Crossing of Washington. 
the clip was so brilliant that I had to buy the DVD. So it's now digitized so that I can watch it whenever and I will not be beholden. Where is the... Seriously? Grief. So I'm not beholden to those who do not want us to watch what we want to watch and only allow us to watch what they stream for us to watch and pay above and beyond what we're already paying. So now I'll get to the video. And they're just trying to screw us at every point they can. And so now and they despise the words of plainness. You know, should I go over Moroni chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 for Mormons? <laughs> Can you see how Mormons despise those words, have created their own traditional words, and what Mormons refer to, which, spiritual witness, you can't find it anymore in there. What Mormons have traditionally developed, as they claim Moroni chapter 10, 4 and 5, is not the same. If you use English grammar, and I know that's science, we gotta let spiritual witness dominate science. The grammatical structure and the definitions of the vocabulary words do not match. Unbelievable. The Book of Mormon is plain and simple in its doctrine concerning faith leading to knowledge. Mormons instead said, faith without works. Yay! It's supposed to be, is dead. And killed the prophets. Yep, Joseph and Hiram were killed, weren't they? And technically murdered should be the word here. Has uh, this has a reoccurring pattern as prophecy, and sought for. In fact, even I, as I guess I am a prophet, like Abinadi and Samuel the Lamanite, and Nephi, because I'm not the leader of the church, neither were the Book of Mormon prophets, but they were called prophets, and so yes, I am a prophet therefore, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints got caught ordering and paying for my assassination. So yes, I fit into this too, isn't that great? and sought for things that they could not understand. They think they're being simple with their spiritual witness. Because nobody can judge a spiritual witness. Oh, no, I had those feelings. You can't argue my feelings. I know they're true. Yeah, but you've got no physical evidence to show for them. <laughs> you can't judge me. <laughs> I refuse to build the physical witness of my spiritual witness because you might be able to then judge me and I might be wrong. And so, as a result, Mormons keep going down forbidden paths of their spiritual witness, creating doctrines and weird concepts that nobody else understands. Literally. Dear God. I mean, Moroni 10, 4, and 5? I don't understand what Mormons are talking about. I don't understand them. I know the Book of Mormon. They don't. And so, yeah, that's what happens. When you do things 
according to your own will. You create your own doctrine, and thus you create your own God. You're an idol worshiper. <sighs> Wherefore? Because of their blindness. And so what we're talking about is the Exodus. There are so much stuff out there that nobody understands. Is Utah Zion? Or are we still having an Exodus? But what will happen to Utah? Will it be two Zions? <laughs> the concept of you don't have an Exodus unless there's wickedness and destruction <laughs> doesn't occur to them. That simple doctrine <laughs> does not occur to them. And so they have to defend the church by creating complex speculations about what's going to happen, what's going to be done. There was yesterday, I think I still have that in the file, there was a Mormon on uh, Mormon land from Salt Lake Tribune where the guy categorized each of the prophets as strong fundamentalist, lean fundamentalist, status quo, lean progressive, strong progressive. And so strong fundamentalist is Neil L. Anderson. This is a Mormon judging the prophets this way. And so a lean fundamentalist, Russell M. Nelson. And he has to clarify the current president, Dell and H. Oaks. What? <laughs> Oaks is hardcore. <laughs> Have you not been paying attention to his talks? Every time he speaks, he pisses off a different group. <laughs> or demanding that he take sensitivity courses. <laughs> So, this is a Mormon who thinks Oaks is a lean fundamentalist. <laughs> it's actually left, right, and center within the left and the right. <laughs> He's not getting his categories correct. But, oh dear God. So, yeah, and then he goes and speculates that Oaks if he once he is made president you know Nelson could die before him then he'll canonize the family proclamation LGBT and you're supposed to add Q uh, I a plus so again Mormon clueless <laughs> are going to be punished in the church <laughs> and how is that lean Holland, uh, he'll allow bishops to perform same-sex marriages. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> I can guarantee you, he will not. <laughs> but the funny one, I thought, Bednar will ban all laughter. <laughs> he's lean? Because <laughs> I think Bednar was also listed among the lean. Yeah, David A. Bednar, lean. <laughs> Dear God, Mormons are so psycho, but that's what they're referring to here. <clears throat> and it's this blindness that Mormons have that they get upset when anybody like me makes fun of their blindness and their stiff-neckedness and their despising of simple plain English <laughs> and the simple doctrines that are in our scriptures that Mormons just nope it can't be that easy I need something more complicated I need to struggle in this life 
and yes, they want me dead. <sighs> but this blindness that Mormons have, right from the Book of Mormon, is because they're looking beyond the mark. They're looking for a Christ who's beyond the mark. I don't know, I've not heard of Mormons talk about Jesus coming on a flying horse. Because in our church, it's all about a pillar of light. <laughs> so, only Christians believe in the horse thing. But I've gone over it with you guys. Constantine created the Jesus of Christians as Trinity. In fact, yesterday was Corpus Christi, where that's the Catholic version of their uh, Last Supper sacrament. See, for Mormons, we just have the sacrament, not understanding that it's a sacred ritual, is what sacrament means. And so the Catholics have multiple sacraments, and so Mormons get confused because they are looking beyond the mark. They have their Mormon tradition, and so anything else is foreign and therefore wrong. And Catholics have it wrong too, but Mormons despise the plainness of the origin of our religion from the Egyptians. <clears throat> and so Mormons don't know that our Christ is 103.16, the man like Moses. Mormon man like Moses. And this is the whole point, is that we're having an exodus right now. We're in the latter days. The rivers have dried up. We can now pass through on dry land during this drought and heat wave that we're into and it's going to get worse as we get into the summer. And so with the Russians doing their cyber attacks, JBS was the latest one that hurt Utah. You know, thousands of employees were unable to work for a day until they paid off the ransom and got the systems back online. But what if Russia decides we're getting away with this too easily? Biden's not stopping us. And we did kind of promise him we were going to escalate before the 16th. I guess we should keep our promises. <laughs> he has full control over America. Everything. He's just toying with us right now. Letting others do it. And it's the same people with JBS as with SolarWinds. Guess where SolarWinds is, Mormons? Utah, run by Mormons. Why are Russians getting access to all these infrastructure systems that all seem to have a connection to the church? <laughs> Remember? The church gave them money in a major city yet to be determined in Russia. Again, Mormons looked beyond the mark when he said that. Mormons were thinking, we're going to convert the Russians to Mormonism. We're going to get a temple, and I can take a trip there. It's part of my temple tour checklist. They looked beyond the mark. The mark is that Putin is a KGB trained mafia leader. He controls the Russian mafia. He controls those cyber groups. 
they do what he tells them to do. He ordered JBS. He ordered Solar Winds. He ordered the election hack through Microsoft. Him! The pipeline! Him! And where's our temple? We don't have one. We gave them money? And we don't have a temple? Oh, but we got $32 billion in return that we were supposed to launder in the stock market. <laughs> Again, Mormons look beyond the mark, missing the crime. And the treason. And the sedition. And so, yeah, they're not going to recognize the exodus when it happens. That's why I'm doing these videos. Mormons are still not going to recognize them if they come across them on their YouTube feed. If YouTube allows it. <laughs> because YouTube is suppressing my views, if you hadn't noticed. And, and so, yeah. There's no way that Mormons are going to know it's happening. They don't even know because Nelson hasn't told them so that we're in the latter days. They're waiting for Nelson to tell them what to do and believe despite the scripture that they all know. Don't be compelled in all things, for he that is compelled in all things is a slothful and unwise servant. And so, yeah, if you didn't know, there will be Mormons who will not know the Christ. This Mormon who will lead them in an exodus. They won't know him. They'll mock him. They'll scoff at him. They'll do what the guy in the, in the comment on TWG this morning did and seek to find fault with him. You know, this Mormon that's terrorizing me is the pattern of Mormon behavior. He's a typical Mormon. A terrorist. Because he's looking beyond the mark. He's so stiff-necked, despising the words of plainness, that he wants me dead. He sent me a death threat. Exactly following the Book of Mormon pattern. See how true the Book of Mormon is, ex-Mormons? <laughs> you are a little too quick to judge. <laughs> and... and because because Mormons are looking beyond the mark, there's a warning here. They must fall. Now, it's not something that good people do. Oh, you're looking beyond the mark. I need to kill you. No. They cause their own destruction, their own fall. Because if you're for example, thinking coronavirus is a hoax and you refuse to wear your mask and refuse to allow others to wear their mask, what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to fall. And America has fallen the most of any other country because we didn't stick to the mark which is in the Exodus story. Moses warns the house of Israel, stay home if you want to live. Did Nelson do that? He's in the office of Moses. Surely he would protect the saints. Nope. He made money off the saints. See, 2020? It was all about making money off of Mormons getting sick. Now, in 2021, 
it's all about making more money on the vaccines. The church has invested in Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer. Pfizer was the big one. Billions of dollars they've already gotten, which means their stock has gone up, which means the church, their investment has already gone up, and it will continue to go up as long as Pfizer continues to be purchased for the rest of the seven billion throughout the world. And the church is doing this off of you, Mormons, your tithing. The church is letting you suffer and die while the church prospers. You've looked beyond the mark. The Book of Mormon tells you how to identify these corrupt religions. And that's why Mormons will not recognize the Exodus when it happens. They will be looking to the prophet to save them, to tell them what to do. And he will be silent still. Remember when we had that big windstorm? Knocked out everybody's power? People's lives were in ruins? Well, Nelson thanked everybody for the birthday wishes. That was it. That's all he cares about. Himself. And the church. He doesn't care about you. You've looked beyond the mark, looking to him as the representative of the Jesus whom you've looked beyond the mark. And you're going to fall. And that's why I'm speaking up. Because as much as you don't deserve it, I'm still trying. My arm is outstretched still to save who will ever listen to me, despite the opposition from YouTube, as ordered by the church, because the church is invested in silencing me and promoting them on YouTube. And YouTube and the church have a little thing going on.